1967 was a very busy year for the Beatles, productively and creatively. Abraham was in England in 1967. No, he wasn't. No, he's in Israel. He came here in 1971. So Abraham's going to tell you about him in 1967 when this amazing phenomenal hit the world. Abraham, yeah. did you hear about the Beatles in 1967? What was going on in Israel? Yeah. What did Israel think about the Beatles? I'm hearing them very high. <laughs> yeah. Well, good time. Did you remember in bars and places hearing the Beatles music in Israel at that time? What was it like? What was people's faces like? What was it like compared to now, Abraham? For Israel, it was all new, all a shock, all because they had, you know, their own stupid... Israeli music, kind of nationalistic music. And the Beatles was something new, something that gave them kind of a new way of thinking, a freedom. Did the Beatles change life? Oh, yeah, all over the world. <coughs> We played the Beatles most day in my car on our journeys. Yeah. We was playing Rubber Soul today, weren't we? We play Help quite a lot. We play Let It Be, Abbey Road. We play all the Beatles albums all the time. How great. What what does the Beatles still do for life today, Abraham? They're still at the top. Every new band, every new group. Nick from the Beatles. You know, that's how they all started. After the Beatles, everybody was kind of copy them, nicking from them. And... Some of them songs on them albums, like Help and Rubber Soul, that you don't even know about, are so good. As good as songs that would be number one now, wouldn't they? Yeah. Every song on, like, Rubber Soul and Help and all them albums, it's just a number one song. They should have released them all as singles, and they would all be number one. Is that right? Yeah. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The Beatles today are number one. And the world needs the Beatles. And the Beatles right now in 2019 are as powerful as they were in 1967. Abraham, we love you. Shine on. We love you, Daddy.